alright, let's just get this over with. Don't see this movie. Whatever you do, don't see this movie. It's god fucking awful. Excuse my language. Spoilers. 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 This movie is horrible. And if there's any kids, I apologize because I will be swearing a lot. This mess they call Dark Phoenix is possibly the worst X-Men film ever made. Granted, you know, you had X-Men Origins, which I didn't actually hate. It had its downsides, but the first half was good. Last half, horrible. But to finish out your X-Men, you know, I won't say, I mean, what, 10, 20 years? 20 years? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try and stay calm because I am a huge X-Men fan. Huge. I've been reading the X-Men. Probably one of the first Marvel comics I've read besides the Fantastic Four was the X-Men. This is such a disservice to anyone who has ever read the Dark Phoenix, Dark Phoenix Saga. It is not. It, it, this mm. Simon Kinberg or Hinberg, whatever the hell his name is, should not be directing a movie. He shouldn't be writing one. And by the way, this is the same guy who wrote X-Men Last Stand. So why are you letting him do this again when he screwed it up so badly the first time? And in that, they actually had a story. That actually did follow true to the um, X-Men, X-Men 2, X-Men United, or X2 United, whatever. I, I'm, I'm a little frazzled because this movie was just all over the place, just kind of like I am right now. My brain is going to explode. This movie is basically almost a... A, not a shot for shot, but storyline, story-wise, very similar to X-Men Last Stand. It's like he didn't learn a damn thing. One, you have to earn doing Dark Phoenix. You haven't earned it. You haven't even really given the younger X-Men a chance to shine. They've only been in what, kind of, you know, Apocalypse, and then in this one, they really weren't in, you know, Days of Future Past. They screwed up when they did X-Men First Class because in the Marvel Comics, X-Men First Class is the first class. Cyclops, Jean Grey, Iceman, Beast, Angel, Professor Xavier, and then you have Magneto as the antagonist. Why the fuck did you make Havoc in there and not Cyclops? This just tells you you have people who don't understand how much people love these characters. Cyclops should always be the number one leader of the X-Men, not Professor Xavier. Professor Xavier is the one who founded everything, but Cyclops is the one who's in the field. He's the one leading the charge. They also screwed over Storm again. She had a... Uh, she just got screwed over again. Quicksilver, you can see where the reshoots happened because he just disappeared in the movie. He may not have been around to do the reshoots. He was just gone suddenly. Nightcrawler... Just terrible, horrible. He at one point, uh, I'm gonna start at the beginning. And I apologize for all the editing that's going on in here. I just, I'm gonna try and do this the right way. We're gonna start over at the beginning. Beginning of Dark Phoenix rips off Shazam. If you remember in the beginning of Shazam, Dr. Savannah, as a kid, is in the backseat of a car arguing with his brother over a toy or something, I can't quite remember, but it causes an accident that kills his family. Damn near beat for beat, that's what happened in the beginning of Dark Phoenix. She's whining because she wants to change the station and her mom just wants to finish hearing a song and then she'll change the channel and the kid, like any other kid, starts whining and crying. Then she starts hearing voices in her head and she starts going, shut up, shut up, and be quiet or something, and then causes the car to swerve and get into an accident and now this scene is pretty actually graphic in a way because it's in very slow motion you're seeing the car turn over and in the car you see Jean Grey see her parents in the front seat getting tossed around in the car and then the scene you see in the trailer where the glass is coming at her but then it bounces away it, it, it's just weird I don't know what the hell they were thinking about how to do Professor Xavier because in this movie, he is just an ass. He is the exact opposite of every other movie he has ever been in. He wanted to nurture and care and help mutants and keep them from being persecuted. In this one, he is just a dick. 
you know, it's like he comes to Gene, you know, almost like a Dr. Phil moment with um, Britney Spears. He just pops up and goes, oh, we'll help you. No one asked you to. But then you get the weirdest interaction between James McAvoy's Professor Xavier and young Gene Grey. He takes a pencil and he tells her, or a pen, and he says, this could be used to write or it could be used to put in someone's eye. Who the hell tells that to a child? That's just weird, man. But then we see him driving her, yes, driving her to the mansion. He is not, he can't move his legs. How the hell is he driving? This is 1974, I think they said, or something like that. They didn't invent cars where you could drive if you uh, were paralyzed. So I don't know how the hell he's doing it because he's a telepathic. He's not a telekinesis. He doesn't have telekinetic powers. He can't move things. That's Gene. So what, did she drive the car where he just sat in the front seat? We don't know. But then we get this time jump. It's now 1994. Somehow between X-Men Apocalypse and this garbage, the X-Men are now... Superheroes. The president has a phone directly to Professor Xavier and it actually has an X on it like Batman. This is just... What the hell? The NASA mission is, you know, in jeopardy. These astronauts are caught in space. An anomaly has shorted out their engines. They are going to die. So, Professor Xavier says what you see in there, don't worry, if it was the president, the X-Men are on their way, or whatever, the X-Men are here to help. Even Quicksilver is like, oh, we're doing space missions now? You know, like, what? They're not prepared for this. They do not have any training to be in space, so why the hell are they going out there? How is the Blackbird capable of space flight? NASA needs a huge rocket with boosters on it to get them into space, but the Blackbird has enough strength to do it with no problem. And they don't have to have any breathing apparatuses on. They don't have to have nothing. They, it's just stupid. Anyway, they get there. And pretty much everything that happens in there, you saw in the trailer. Damn near everything. You don't see anything new. They see this fart cloud, kind of like what they did in Fantastic Four with Galactus and in Green Lantern. Why do they like to just do these cloud entities? It just doesn't work. I mean, oh my god. Anyway, you know, they Nightcrawler and Quicksilver teleport in there. They get all the astronauts out of all but one. Always one jackass. Now, here's the thing. Nightcrawler needed a helmet to breathe, but they send Nightcrawler back with Gene. Gene doesn't need a helmet. Whatever. Nightcrawler gets the guy out, teleports away. I'm not sure why he didn't teleport with Jane, or why, you know, Jean didn't go with him. She has to now keep the ship connected together so that they can, you know, it doesn't, you know, blow up or whatever. And here's another thing. They don't know how to remember how powerful characters are. Because Storm... <sighs> Storm was able to use her powers to create enough frost on the ship to keep it pressurized. Okay, fine. Whatever. It's what Later on in the film, she just doesn't know how to do a goddamn thing, but we'll get to that. As you see, Kurt and the astronaut telepath, or teleport back over. Gene's trapped in the damn ship. The, um... Entity. I, I will not call it the Phoenix Force because if you remember in, um, at the end of Apocalypse, didn't you use the Phoenix Force to take out Apocalypse? Completely forget about that. That's just gone, people. Don't even worry about that. Never, never happened. It was that movie never happened. But it's still better than this garbage. So she gets imbued with this in the Space Force. The ship blows up. The entity goes all in her body and she's floating in space. Kurt now, now can teleport and get Jean and bring her back to the ship, which, how is it that a helmet that Quicksilver had to duct tape to his head will keep him breathing in space and not get frozen to death? I have no idea, but it did. They bring Jean back 
And one of the worst things that you have in this series is you don't have any connection between her and Scott to make you feel for these two as a couple. But they're trying to force it. Because Scott's like, where, where are you, Gene? And then she gets back, I love you, Gene. I wish you, Gene. Oh, I'm so happy you're alive. Garbage. We don't care. Get on with the story. We get back to Earth. And this part just really threw me. The astronauts land. X-Men land. Astronauts get off their uh, shit off the uh, shuttle. The X-Men come out. And people are cheering the X-Men. There are toys of Mystique. And there one kid dressed up in blue. They're now superheroes. They are world-recognized superheroes. When the X-Men were going into space, they actually had a scene where it was showing you different images from around the world. People watching it on TV, watching as they, t as they broadcast the X-Men going into space to save these people. They're not the Avengers. How the hell did they get the status? It just happened. It, there's no backstory as to how this happened since Apocalypse. Because you would think after Apocalypse, people would be so terrified of mutants that these X-Men would not be superheroes, but they are. It's boring as shit. They get back to the mansion and Mystique, played by Jennifer Lawrence, is acting all weird and upset because Xavier is now getting accolades and the X-Men are now popular people love them and he, and she's like well it's all going to your head and he's like look would you rather us be persecuted would you rather people hate us make your mind up and then she gets into this whole diatribe of you know Jean should be dead and you're like what the hell what is with this woman she is acting like she's upset that Jean is alive how is it that they've made Mystique the leader of the X-Men I have no idea but it should never have happened it's nighttime. There, all the kids are out in the uh, in the back in the you know forest part of the <laughs> mansion, and they're partying. Where we see, which I actually thought was a cool little cameo, Dazzler, because she was supposed to be on a movie or a album cover in Apocalypse, but they cut the whole mall scene out, so we never got that. But we actually do get to see Dazzler. There's no if fans or bust. She's got the makeup. She's wearing white. It's Dazzler. It's pretty cool. Won't deny. Very few things I'm going to say I like about this movie, and that might be one of the only things. Jean is now acting a little weird, super thirsty, gunning down punch like crazy. Alcoholic punch, most likely, because they are kids. And we see that Xavier is watching them on a monitor, which is creepy. And then you have Mystique and Beast in the lab talking about Jean and how, her, how she shouldn't have survived, how her powers don't work that way, and... They did a few tests on her when she came back, and now they're waiting to get all the information. It's really just as jumbled as what I am telling you now. It's horrible. I am sorry if I am taking a long time getting to this, but this is just how slow the movie is. Jean starts freaking out. She starts hearing all this stuff, and she basically just loses it. Passes out. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go beat for beat with this movie. It's just horrible. Basically, they just fast track the fact of her losing her damn mind. We find out that Xavier had lied to Jean her whole life. Her father is alive. Her mother died in an um, accident. She finds this out. She freaks out. She leaves. We now get to Genosha, and Magneto once again, just like in all the other movies, tries to live a life on his own. And we find out that the government has given Magneto this land so that the mutants can live there in peace. All right, I mean, it's kind of comic book accurate, but not. It started off as an area where mutants were being um, enslaved and then they were freed and then they took Genosha over and made it into a mutant paradise, but whatever. I have one question. Why is it whenever they want to bring in mutants who are just secondary characters, they look like something out of a bad 90s music video? I mean, these mutants look just as bad as the ones in X-Men Last Stand. I almost thought these were the same characters. One guy has long braids that he can whip around. Another girl is telekinetic and can fight with knives. It's just dumb. You don't care about anybody. But Jean goes... Oh. Hold on, I jumped ahead. I jumped ahead from the one scene that we all saw in the trailer. And that is Mystique 
basically getting killed. What Jennifer Lawrence had put in her contract basically is like, if I do this, it's to kill me off. And there's this rumor that she says she would only do it if Simon uh, Kinberg or Hinberg, whatever his name is, um, was directing it, which I, I, if that's the case, woman, you've lost your damn mind. Because this man has never directed a movie before. He wrote X-Men Last Stand, had a hand in Apocalypse. I don't know if he had a hand in Days of Future's Past, but Days of Future's Past was good, so I doubt it. He may have just produce that. But you don't give a first-time director a $200 million budget and say, here you go, go make our last X-Men film in our franchise. You don't do that. You bring back, you know, oh God, I forgot his damn name. Ugh. You, you should have got a good director for this. But you did. And maybe they just decided, well, this is the last one and no one cares, so we don't care. Because that shows. The effects in this movie is sloppy. The editing, the cinematography is non-existent. Beat for beat, the characters in here are wrong. <sighs> Professor Xavier is an egotistical maniac who has manipulated Jean since he met her. Beast gets mad because Mystique gets killed when Jean goes back home to find out that her father's alive. She actually goes and sees her father and her father's terrified of her. Ugh. This is horrible. This is just a horrible movie. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. It's so bad, but I'm only halfway through the movie. Ugh. The scene where Mystique is killed is not even a heartfelt moment because it's not earned. And that's the thing with this whole franchise. They, they didn't earn anything that happened in this movie. At least with X-Men uh, 2, X-Men United or whatever it is. You see at the end, Jean uh, sacrifices herself to save the rest of them. At the end of the movie, we see in the water the phoenix um, in there, very lightly, giving you an indication that in the next movie we're going to get the phoenix. Now, again, it was fast-tracked, but it was in a third movie where we at least had development with the other characters. We got to know Wolverine, we kind of got to know Storm, Cyclops, Jean Grey for sure. You know, we got introduced to Nightcrawler and X-Men 2, Professor Xavier and Magneto are fantastically played by Patrick Stewart and Ian uh, McKellen. This, you don't get that because they never give you a movie where it's just the younger X-Men growing into their roles. The guy who plays Cyclops, he's horrible. He is just God freaking awful. Storm, the actress who played her, she must not want another job because before this movie came out, she was bashing the movie saying, I didn't have enough to do in it. And it's just like, have you not seen an X-Men film? You really thought you were going to have a role in it? I mean, your role in Apocalypse was god awful. She's not a terrible actress, but it's just none of them are terrible actors. They all are great actors. That's the thing. Except for maybe Nightcrawler. That dude just, I don't know, he's weird. But it's just so badly done. So horribly done. I mean, we see the whole thing with Genosha after Jean kills Mystique. She goes to Magneto. Magneto keeps asking her, you know, there's a drop of blood on her. A drop of blood. Which there shouldn't be because she was nowhere near Mystique when Mystique died. She blew Mystique away and Mystique got impaled by some wood or maybe it looked like a, a pitchfork because <laughs> they really don't show you. They kind of give you a glimpse of it but it's, it's dumb. Good, she's gone. She was, she's been terrible since they, the last, only good movie she was in in the X-Men franchise was First Class and Days of Futures Past. Apocalypse, just horrible. And this one, you can tell she didn't want to be there. You can tell. You can tell really none of them wanted to do it. Maybe because they knew it was the last movie in a franchise and they wouldn't get to do more, but you would think you want to go out on a high note and they don't. Uh, I haven't even talked about Jessica Chastain's character because if you don't know comic books, you will not know who this is. And I know comic books, and I didn't even know the character's name. Vuk. V U K or something like that. Oh my god, this, oh. Uh, I, you know, I, I can't, I'm, I'm not going to finish um, telling you the story. It's just god awful. You see almost all of it in the trailers anyway. Don't see this mess. Don't. I mean, there is nothing that redeems this movie. There is a stupid ass scene in there where they get captured and one of the, I think one of the Brotherhood 
if they, they, they've never been called the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants or Brotherhood of Mutants at all. But one of them ends up getting killed because Nightcrawler couldn't save her, her or him in time. And he loses it and starts slaughtering people. His ta he takes his tail, jabs it in someone's neck, teleports this one lady in front of a train to let her get run over, stabs somebody. I mean, they forget characters. In X-Men 2, before anyone says that, Nightcrawler was controlled. He was not willingly doing any of those acts. And this one, he purposely does it. Fucking horrible. Don't see this movie. I'm not going into further detail. Please don't see this movie. Save your money. When it comes out on video, get drunk before you see it because it's just fucking terrible. Terrible. You don't even get to really know who these aliens are. And yes, Jessica Chastain and the rest are aliens. I will say this. It is slight. It is comic book accurate, but not. And I can't remember, the Jabari, these are the people who were on the planet that um, Jean Grey as a phoenix consumed. They really, the, they're in one, you see them in one panel. Vuk has been in actually some older comics, Avengers number four, Vuk appeared in, in an Excalibur comic book, coming back, you know, for vengeance, but never a, a top level or even B, C or D level villain. You, if I didn't do some research on this, I would not have known this character was a Marvel character. But it's just horrible. Why didn't you have uh, Jessica Chastain be Lilladria? It would make sense. You know, you could have brought in, and I keep forgetting her name, I keep I keep wanting to say the Star Jammers, but it's not the Star Jammers, but it's the one that has uh, Gladiator and all the other characters. That is what I thought we were going to at least get a glimpse of, because they act like them. They're not, they don't look like them by no means, but that would have made more sense and it would have been more connecting to people who have read the Dark Phoenix stories, but whatever. Don't see this. It's it's horrible. The ending! They ripped off Batman uh, Dark Knight Rises. Completely ripped it off. At the end, Xavier is like Italy or Greece or somewhere sitting there and then Magneto walks up. Hello, old friend. Well, and the whole movie, Xavier and Magneto are at odds for the right reason this time. Magneto's like, you know, stop your speeches. I don't want to hear it. We've heard it. You're a liar. <laughs> you know, basically just confronts him and just says, yo, we're going to kill Jane, which... I, we know that Beast and Mystique had a relationship. But to go and say, I'm going to now kill Jane for a storm storm to go to Scott right after they bury Jean and to tell him that we have to uh, we have to take her down you know we have to stop her who the hell are you to say anything because in Apocalypse you were one of Apocalypse's four horsemen you helped kill people you were trying to kill the X-Men so she should never have said anything Quicksilver halfway through the movie he disappeared he's gone and then he appeared at the very end of the movie when they're walking through the mansion you could see where the reshoots were because they apparently were too close to the Captain Marvel storyline. Because I have a feeling that these were scrolls originally and not Jabari. So they had to redo all of it all over again. And it shows. It's horrible. The fight scene at the end is terrible because, again, they don't understand how their powers work. If Storm is supposed to be a mega level, omega level mutant. She's getting beat up by a dude who can whip his uh, hair around. I did like seeing Beast fight Cyclops a little bit. That was kind of nice to see, you know. But even Xavier, he he now you know seemed like he was depowered in a way. He couldn't do a lot. It's like really, really. And then Sophie Turner as Jean Grey, all through the movie, all she kept doing was giving a look of. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, don't see this, please. <laughs> I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop because... Oh, my God. Tell you what. Have you guys seen this movie? What did you think about it? 
hit me in the comment section below. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button so people know that this is a good video. Even though it's long-winded and me just bitching and complaining. <laughs> and remember, if there is a comment that you want to make that you don't want to leave here on YouTube, I'm at all these places right here. Don't forget, if you guys have any movies that you guys want to donate, in the comment section below, I'll have uh, my address that you can send these things to. Uh, don't, don't, don't see this. Don't, don't do it. Just don't. For me. God. <laughs> Peace. I want my money back. I want my mommy. <laughs>